morning, it's Vivian. Welcome to episode 16 of Sit and Net with Vet. Today is Wednesday the 6th of May and it's Vivian here coming to you from a very sunny and reasonably warm Essex here in the UK. I hope everyone is well, I hope everyone is staying safe and sane and crafting their way through this lockdown. I think we're on day 40 something of lockdown here in the UK but I've completely lost track of the days and the time. Days of the week, days of the month, you name it, it's all blurred into one. So, But I am keeping busy, so that's a good thing. So like I said, for any new viewers, and we have had some more subscriptions since last month, so welcome to my channel. My name is Vivian, and I live here in Essex in the United Kingdom with my partner Sean and our cat Bonnie. If you want to find me on social media, I'm very active on Instagram, and my Instagram name is at vivetb1 and I will put it along the bottom and there I post what I've been doing mainly on a daily basis weekly basis how I'm getting on with projects and when my next podcast or any other um, links that I might upload will be available so that's a very good place to follow me is on Instagram so if you're all sitting comfortably let's get on with what I've been knitting since I last spoke to you so as you can see beside me the lovely Polly is here again the mannequin and she is modeling my flax sweater so this flax sweater is the flax light so it's the four ply version the thin green white one and i've knit it completely out of scraps so these are leftover yarn for when i've knitted socks or shawls or jumpers or anything like that and i've got as you can see various different colors in it's a really lovely pattern to work on if i turn around slightly you can see if i turn it Hang on a minute, let's see if I can turn up, come on, that's it. It's got a garter panel that runs down the side here. Um, it is also a full sleeve pattern, looks a bit wonky. A full sleeve pattern, but I opted just to do a short sleeve. And the reason being for that is I can wear it over a long t-shirt like one of these now, or I can wear it just as a short sleeve top when it's a bit warmer. So that is my first finished object, which is my flex light. Um, I've done it as a scrappy. I'm going to do another couple of these because I've got plenty of yarn left over. I did it as a scrappy because my cat loves my hand dyed yarn. If I've got a jumper or a cardigan or something that I've knitted on, she loves to sit and knead on it and her claws come out and then she pulls on it. So I thought if I did a scrappy one, I wouldn't be quite so anxious when she does do it. Um, and I have worn it and she has sat on my lap and she's, she's not bothered by it at all. And I haven't quite gone... <gasps> every five minutes so it's it's served its purpose but i really really love wearing it it's really lovely very comfortable and i'm definitely going to be doing some more of those so that is my first finished object my second finished object is a shawl now this is i only cast it off last night let's see i'll get it out with knocking out knocking everything over i only finished it last night and it is i haven't we've woven in any ends and i haven't blocked it yet either and i started it beginning of the year January time I think it was definitely January because it is the Elysi Elysian shawl by Mina Philip who is knitting expat and she was wearing her version of it during her um, vlogmas in December and I really really liked it so I decided to cast one on for myself what I like about this shawl is it's a what I call a recipe shawl so the pattern is actually written for double knit but it's written on a percentage basis so it says knit colour A for X percentage you know um, bring in colour B, bring in colour C etc when you get to X percentage of yarn left on whatever colour you're knitting and the brilliant thing about that is you can actually take that and do it with any weight yarn so I did mine in fingering weight and it did it has taken a long time and I'll explain why in a minute so this is the finished object it's quite huge and you can see here, like I say, I only cast it off at 10 o'clock last night, so I have no photographs of it, but I will take one on the model. I haven't woven in the ends and I haven't blocked it. So as you can see, it's it's really squishy. It's all garter stitch, and then it's got a big panel in the middle of two colour fisherman rib, ribs. So if I pull it apart, you'll see it better where you then change colours. And that is the bit that has taken me ages. I did put it down for a little bit because I have to concentrate on the fisherman's rib for every single row. I have washi tape markers everywhere so I know exactly what I'm doing. I tick it off each row that I've done and it was getting a bit like, oh, I can't. But then I thought, actually, no, I'm in the mood to do it now. And I've had a couple of quiet days. And also with being in, I can sit in the garden at the moment and it's quite quiet and I can just get on with it. So I have managed to finish it and I'm really pleased with it. And I think it's going to be lovely and warm in the winter. 
so it's not meant to be huge but it will be a bit bigger when it's blocked but this is what it looks like when it's on so it's like you can say quite quite good and it's going to be quite squishy and warm and like I say the, it's really really squishy because the fisherman's whip so the colours that I used the top colour here is called charred plum and it's by stranded dye works and it has been in my stash for about four years um, it's a really 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 dark purple almost black I then for the second part of the fisherman's rib bought in the grey which is alter ego by truly hooked um, and that's lovely because it's grey but it's got specks of purple and pinks in it and the third yarn that I used wasn't the original yarn that I was going to use with this I was going to use a really bright pink to go with the thing and then with the purple and I thought oh no maybe it's a bit too bright so when I was away in February I was at the Suffolk Socks knitting retreat and Emma who is the dyer behind Serene Yarns was there and I picked up one of her colourways which is this bottom one which is called Raspberry, Kish Ki Raspberry Kisses um, and I thought oh can you see that and I thought that looked really really lovely with the thing and I have got quite a bit of it left over I've got about 30 grams of each ball left over I could have done more but I decided that actually no this was big enough and I just wanted to to get it cast off it will grow a bit when I block it and then it's meant it's not meant to be a light shawl though I want it for the winter so it's a really snuggly cozy shawl when I'm out and about in the winter so that is my second finished object so that's my knitting done on finished objects now I have another finished object that is sewing and English paper piecing and this is my cushion so this is my cushion here and it's a zipped cushion and I did the English paper piecing that I would have shown you on my last podcast and since then I have just attached it to the front and made the quilt made the cushion rather um, in hindsight I wouldn't have done it on such a clear thing only because the cat has taken a love to it she will not leave it alone and the back of it as I have a tortoise hair cat tortoise shell cat with quite dark hairs it's filthy with cat hair so we won't look at that too much but she really really loves this so this has kind of got hers I have another one of these hexagons and I've decided that I'm actually going to applique it onto a piece of fabric and, and then turn it into a tote bag. So I've got like a tote bag type knitting project bag with my own hexagon on it. So that is the plan with what I've done. I've done the hexagon, I just, the, the fabric that I've got is actually out on the line being washed and then I will do that probably over the weekend or next week sometime. So that's my next plan. So that is my other finished object on sewing and quilting. And that is actually all of my finished objects um I have been busy but I have been working on three garments that I will talk about now so let's get on with that without further ado so the first one that I've been working on is when I you may remember that I was working on the Macaulay cardigan which is a pattern by Katie Green who is the podcaster behind the Green Bean podcast um and I've been knitting on this I started it about six weeks ago and I've knit all the pieces so this is the pattern it's not a very good copy unfortunately because I've got um I had ish printer issues when I printed it off but I'm doing it in a burgundy which is West Yorkshire spinners in their air DK and I've mixed it with a, a really pale cream for the just little contrast so I've done front to back the, t the two panels at the front and all the sleeves all I've got to do now is actually block it and then I can actually seam it all together and then I can do the button band around the front and the neck I'd finished it and we had beautiful weather over Easter and I was like oh great I finished it I'm just literally I'll get to block it and then it rained and then I was like oh okay then so maybe I'll put it down I don't have a huge amount of room to block in the house but I have a very big patio out in the back so when it's good weather like it's going to be for the next couple of days I can actually lay out some blocking mats and some yoga mats on the patio and pin it all out there so that is my plan is to actually do that because it's going to hit 70 odd degrees here in the UK tomorrow so that's my plan for tomorrow so that cardigan is three quarters finished I just need to block it and then I can do the next part and by the next podcast I will hopefully have it finished because I want to be wearing it by then 
So as soon as that one has been sitting in hiatus for a little bit whilst I've been waiting for the weather to perk up, I've cast on another cardigan. So this cardigan is this one here. It's by, it's by King Cole Pattern and it's pattern 5018. They don't have names for their patterns. And I'm doing this version here, which is the short version. It does have a longer version, but I'm doing the, the cropped version. Um, and I saw this pattern, I don't know if any of you follow Eleanor, who is the um, owner behind the yarn shop, Knit Nottingham. She also has a vlog that she podcasts, and she doesn't podcast in sense as I do, but she talks about the yarns that she stocks, the patterns that she has in stock, um, what's coming up events-wise and things like that. And she normally does for September what they used to call a Yarndale uniform, because they all used to get a coach trip up to Yarndale and they would knit a garment like a jumper or a cardigan or something so that we'd all have matching but they're not going this year obviously because it was closed and they weren't planning on going anywhere but they're still doing what would be their Yarndale uniform and this was one of the um patterns that was voted by customers to to be knitted and I really really liked it um I like the cropped version better than I like the long version I think it's because on the long version it goes over her hands and I just think to me that's like ill-fitting but that's just personal opinion so I have cast on this one. Unfortunately, it's done in King Cole's Panache is the DK range that they recommend. And this colour grey was out of stock. Um, and I decided that actually I wanted a grey because I've got lots of blue, navy blue dresses with patterns on them. I thought a plain grey one would go with most of my wardrobe. But they don't do grey in Panache. So, I'm knitting it in King Cole's Price Rise. So this is a grey, it doesn't have a colour, obviously it does have a name, it's called Clerical. Unusual name for grey, but never mind. Um, and it is shade number 49, but it is just a light grey basically. Um, and I am, this is what I've done so far. So I'm just up one of the front panels at the moment, and that is the cable pattern that runs all the way up the front, front rather. Um, and that's just what I've, what I've done so far. It's a really... Um, easy cable to remember once you get started and it's a really lovely for, for a commercial price budget yarn it's lovely to work with it's very soft it is 100% acrylic but it's very soft and it's just lovely really really nice to knit with um, I think when it comes to knitting for with commercial yarns for things such as blankets and stuff like that I like Starcraft DK you can't beat a blanket in Starcraft DK if you're crocheting However, I have knit some jumpers in Starcraft DK and DK Special and they peel really, really badly. They do peel really, really badly. However, the three jumpers that I, and cardigans that I've knit in King Cole, um, one of them has been in just um, King Cole Drifter and the other one was just King Cole, it might have been called Cherish, I can't remember. But it was just one of their budget range. It wasn't, none of those have peeled. Not at all, and they've been through the wash. I've worn them constantly, and they haven't. So, I think going forward for budget yarns, when it comes to knitting garments, I will be looking at King Cole and James C. Brett over and above Starcraft purely because of the pilling. Um, I have to kind of defuzz them quite often, and I'd rather not have to unless I have to. But this one, like I say, really, really enjoying it to knit with, and I'm really looking forward to wearing that. So, that is my first whip, which is my cardigan. My second whip third whip, second whip that I'm working on because is a pair of socks and just because I needed some mindless knitting in the evening and it's just a plain vanilla sock this is the colourway and this is all that I've done so far is this one here and this one is a James C. Brett sock yarn now I'd, I'd never seen James C. Brett sock yarn and then I had to, I was ordering something from Wool Warehouse months and months ago and I needed to make up the, the difference when you get £25, you know, if you go over £25, you get your free postage and that. And I saw this sock yarn called Funny Feet. And this was only four ninety nine as opposed to £7, which is the normal average price for sock yarn. So I thought, well, if it's only a fiver and I only needed a fiver's worth to actually tip me over the balance, I'll, I'll try this. And it's the first time I've used it. It's 75% superwash, 25% polyamide, 400 metres, 430, 436 yards. So it's standard. But when I knit it, and I've knit quite a few socks, as many of you will know, 
this comes up a lot thicker than a four ply it's i would say it's nearer a six ply so these i'm knitting for sean um because he likes a thicker sock in the winter and i just thought i'll just try them out they're on, i'm knitting them on a high high sharps on a 2.5 and it's okay i've used better sock yarn it's such as opal and regier they are my go-to sock yarns like i say it, it knits up quite thick and it's a little bit splitty now i don't know if that's because i've got the sharp needles and they're catching the yarn and they're going through or whatever but it's okay for five pound it's great if i'd paid seven pound fifty eight pound for it i'd be a little bit miffed but at five pound it's okay if, especially if you want a thicker a thicker pair of socks for the winter but you don't want to knit a dk pair of socks you want i would say try this but don't go in there expecting cashmere merino or anything like that because it is it's not rough but it is rustic so that is my sock so i know that davina who is a uh, little workroom crafts she actually works in haberdashery and she does yarn ordering and stuff like that she's knitting with their newer version of it called funny feet which has got bamboo in it and she really likes that but this was the first one that came out and it didn't have the bamboo content so i'm tempted i might get some of the bamboo just to see the difference really um but like i say it is slightly thicker it's an okay pair of socks don't get me wrong and i'm sure that they will wear really well because they have are that little bit stronger um but if i'm honest i prefer opal and i prefer west yorkshire spinners but for sean this will be fine so that's my next whip my final whip is a test knit and i'm doing a test knit for verity who is truly hooked um she has got a pattern out called the philippa sweater and it's one of her own designs and it's due to be released in the autumn um i don't have any pictures of it but i will put the hashtag along the bottom because you can go and look at it on instagram because there's pictures of verity wearing her prototype version which is currently what we are test knitting so it's a cropped top with long sleeves or you can do three quarter sleeves if you wanted to and it's bottom up so this is where i've got to now this is going to be a bit hard to show you because i've i've done it's going to look weird but just bear with i've done the round in the round at the bottom and now i've split and i'm doing up the back so that's kind of like up the back and as you can see it's striped and the reasons it's striped is that you hold you're doing a certain number of rows in the four ply and this is pickled cabbage which is one of um verity's own color works and she very giftly very kindly gifted this is yarn support so thank you for that verity and then the other stripe you do with a lace weight and this lace weight is called pixelated unicorn by gamer crafting and i've had this in my stash since woolen in 2018 which is when i got it i did start sure with it and then i didn't like it so i stripped it ripped it back um but i think it's working really well in this striped um crop top so I'm really enjoying it. It's a really nice, it's really nice to knit because it's because it's in the round basically, and you just have to, you know, change stripes also. And the other thing that I do, and I don't know if anyone's seen this, but this is a little tip that I have is when you're doing top up, and it quite often says split for sleeves and put on split for the front and the back and put on waist yarn. I don't do that. Because I use interchangeables, I actually leave them on one long cable, and as you can see, I've joined it. I know you might be able to see that better if I put my hand in. I've joined it with a couple of bulldog pins and the reason being is, is the needles the stitches can't go over so you don't lose it I then knit it with a second cable for the thing and then when it says to pick up front I haven't got to take it all off the waist yarn and put it back on the cable I just attach the needles to it so that is just a little trick but that is my my thing so far like I said I can't because it's top up you haven't don't see much shape into it but again it's a nice easy knit and this is due out in autumn um but i will have it finished by then and verity is more than happy for me to talk about it on the podcast and like i say i'll put the the hashtag for it philippa sweater um on instagram where you've got pictures of how the other test knitters are getting on and also how uh, verity has finished hers so i'm looking forward to that and i think i should be doing a, quite a few more of that so that's all that i have for kind of like the crafting content but i have been doing lots of other things so i've been doing if you follow me on instagram you will know that i've been doing lots of doodling as i call it 
Um, this came about because Claire runs an in-house Zentangle, Zentangle class, which is the lovely Hannah who comes along, Hannah Geddes, who comes along and teaches Zentangle at BTHQ when we're open, but we're not open at the moment. So she has started to post some of her tutorials online on YouTube. And I'd never done it. I hadn't been able to make any of the other classes that she'd had so far. And the next one was going to be, or could still be in June. So I kind of like had that one in my mind, but I thought, well, as this comes up, I'll just have a go in between. And it's a great way of keeping myself occupied during lockdown as well, because I don't want to knit the whole time. So yeah, so I have been doing some of these and I've been posting them on my Instagram page so you can have a look at them. So just to give you an idea, um, that's one, and then that's another one. And I really like doing the pebbles one because you can literally just draw circles and, color and like kind of shade it in. It's really, really good. That's one that I've done recently. Um, which again, that's one. And it's just using pen and ink and doing some shading. That was my attempt at doing some like dandelion heads. And this is one that I did this morning. And this one is quite, this is called Rick's Paradox. And you can see like shapes coming out of it. And then another one that I've done recently, it's just a doodle, just like that, just to practice some shapes and stuff like that. But this is really, really, really fun to do. Um, you can buy actual Zentangle tiles, which are the these. Um, but I thought, as I'm practicing, I'm not going to pay out for the proper tiles. So I picked up off Amazon blank beer coasters, beer mats. And obviously, I got a pack of 200, I think it was for about £5 or something. 100 of these and 100 of these and they're ideal they're the same sort of type of paper and they are really ideal for just sitting and drawing and doodling so i think beer mats are going to be the way forward so when the pubs are open i might be going in and just looking for ones that are blank underneath and nabbing those but i won't really so the only other thing that i did treat myself to which was following on from the zentangle is a one zentangle a day book um, obviously for Mr. Amazon because he is my friend at the moment and it's just a book that has, gives you the tutorials on how to draw each pattern some exercises to do with it so various different ones throughout the history of Zentangle and what it means and how to do it and how to incorporate it into other things such as birthday cards and things like that so it's been really interesting to read actually and I've thoroughly enjoyed practicing some of them I do follow some people on Instagram that do Zentangle. So my friend Rachel, who goes to Beautiful Things, she does it and hers are fantastic. And another friend of mine, Kat, her husband Chris does it and his are like just, and again, absolutely fantastic. And I'm just like, oh wow. But I just enjoy it for the doodling aspect of it. I mean, if I get more practice, the better I'll get it, I'm sure. But it's just such fun to do and it's such a relaxing thing to do. So really, really enjoying it. So that's really all that I have very short and sweet today. Um, mainly I think because I've been working on large projects so that's why I haven't got lots of content but I've got a fair deal. So I'm now that I've cast off my shawl I think I might have to cast on another pair of socks maybe. Finish my jumper. Cast on another, I could cast on another one of these couldn't I because I've just finished one off but who knows. Anyway that's all that I have for the moment. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope you all stay safe. And I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Bye.